Okay, and we're on. Welcome back, everybody, to the 2022 Oceania Championships competition week. The video is finally here. Uh, it will cover everything from our first training session, which you're watching right now, where I didn't film everything, just a few clips here and there. Uh, we'll cover podium training and, of course, the competition itself. Um, it's a pity I waited so long to make this video because all the hype, all the enthusiasm and the memories are kind of dissipating away. So um, I've been I've been busy. I've been sick. Lot, lots has been going on and um, couldn't uh, couldn't get it out faster than this. So this time I can spoil it all. Um, well, uh, let's just start with day one. We arrived, we had one day in the training gym. The second day was our podium training and the third day was competition, which was very different to Oceania last year where we had, well, I had, it was only me, one day in between podium and competition to recover. Um, this changed the dynamics of podium training entirely because especially um, myself doing all around, I had to be careful to not overdo, not to do, for example, all six routines like I would have done last year in podium training, but just to do what I had to do. So this is the beginning of podium. And what I noticed is when I do the double backflip, my knees are very far apart. For some reason, when I grab that tuck underneath my hamstrings, it goes wide. And I think I talked about that last week as well. But when I do an open tuck without grabbing my knees, it's uh, it's it's fine. It's knees together, which is a good segue. Today, finally, I have done my first ever in my life triple twisting double backflip. Round of applause. It was awesome. I landed straight on my face in the foam pit. Um, so it was nowhere near uh, landable, but after about 10 tries or so, literally about 10 tries of just doing two and a half quarter, two and a half quarter, I managed to pick up my nuts, as they say, and uh, better said, get some courage and, and go for it. So I'm excited. First time in my life at 30, and I reckon I'll do it once a week and uh Maybe just get get it at least landable on a on a solid map from the air, air track. Speaking of fear, once again uh, the vault scares came to town, and I uh, was planning on doing a double twist in Yuchenko once in the podium training, but I just wasn't feeling it, so I ended up doing my only double twist during the actual competition. Something about that vault just. Uh, does not vibe with me and it's probably the fact that I've dislocated my knee entirely doing that vault. I've subluxed my kneecaps. So uh, not the greatest history with me and the vault. Nevertheless, we're still, we're still doing it. So I decided at the Oceania Championships to do my full P-Bars difficulty and uh, it paid off, although it wasn't quite as clean as TriStar Championships, I did get a 14.8. And the good news, well not so good news, but the, the good news is that what I had a minor mistake and it was on a simple Healy. So a relatively easier skill for me where I caught a little bit funny and ended up swinging up with uh, my arms bent. You'll see it in the video. So. The first part, the difficult part, was done probably as, as good as I could have done it. I've included routines from, uh, well, I think I included actually most of the routines from the New Zealand boys. Uh, I didn't film uh, much of the Australians, and I also don't know if I'm even allowed to, to use that footage in these videos. Um, Funny story, I had to change my start because the rules now are that you can only have th three movements before starting your first 
skill on high bar. So if you kind of do a jump to the bar, catch, do a little swing forward, little swing back, and then do your up start, well, that's already three there. So that shoot forward and shoot back is gonna be four, five movements. So what I had to do was jump the bar, jump catch the bar, and go directly into, into toast the bar for the up start. And you'll see a funny clip where I kind of hop up and then I hop back down because I realized I, I didn't do it right. So this should be nearing the end of the podium session. From memory, my podium went went well. I think I did a good amount uh, because I didn't feel uh, tired at all for the for the event the next day. We started on floor. Australians competed first, uh, and we followed on every single apparatus. Um, so let's get to the results. The results were that Australia won. So Australia has earned the team spot for this year's World Championships. And myself and William earned the all-round spots for New Zealand to this World Championships. To which we are uncertain if we're going to go because it's very expensive. And uh, yeah, comp day warm-up. I did film some some of the warm-up as well. I always film my high bar warm-up. There you go, that was it. Jumped up, jumped back down. So yeah, Worlds is gonna be about a, a 10K trip or so, to be honest, so um, I'm gonna have to think because I want to do it. I want to do World Championships, but yeah, that's a, that's a big one, especially considering that uh, World Cups, World Cups this year, um, were obviously a bit expensive as well. Hey, that's my own fault for not being good enough to, to get funding. I have to be like, in, in New Zealand, if you're top 16 at World Championships and Olympics, you get a little bit of help. Anything top eight at above, then you start getting a, a significant amount of uh, funding. So uh, on floor, I was, oh, the one thing that I didn't get everybody's routines on was was floor. Um, after after this routine, somebody noticed my my tripod filming, and they came up to the coach and said, "I'm not sure who it was, but the rules are that you can't have video equipment on the field of play." So what I did, I had my friend uh, Serge, Pal Serge Wellness on Instagram. He was there. Uh, he used to do some privates with me at Tristar. I'm not sure you remember, but I have posted. He, he's like 31 years old and he did giants on the strap bars after about six or so training sessions. So he was there. He's moved to the Gold Coast. He watched the competition. Shout out to Power Surge Wellness. And he uh, filmed the rest of the routines for, for me and the boys. And uh, what I'm watching right now in front of me, I haven't included the scores yet. So I'll just tell the scores by memory, but you guys should be able to see the full uh, scores when I, uh, well, if I decide to add them, I think I will add the scores. So we got the last part of Sam's floor routine here. And good job, Sam. He put that floor routine together pretty quick. We hadn't had too many repetitions on the entire floor without the soft mats. Um, Sam would usually do his dismount onto the resi pit because it's a little bit iffy. Uh, so good job, Sam. I think he was in the 13s, 13-3 or something. Ethan started for us on floor. He starts all the time on floor competing for Penn State. So we figured put him up first and uh, it paid off. He hit. He was somewhere in the mid-13s, I believe. After that, I think it was Sam. No, me, my uh, Sam and then William. From a horse, Will was first, hit routine. I was second. And um, if you watch closely on the Savato, you'll see I almost uh, let it go on the second part of it. But otherwise I managed to scrape into the 13s once again. I don't know how. Um, adrenaline kicked in. I didn't really feel the, the finger too much. So all was well. 
And it's always good when you get a dismount that pops up smooth. Ethan followed, so we've had two out of two hits so far. Australia had just come before us, so I believe they hit four out of four. And I'm not one to watch uh, the competition, but you could tell by the energy in the room that uh, the Australians were, were hitting every single routine. Um, they had a massive floor rotation. Everybody hit. There was uh, some high 13s in there. Um, I think Jesse, I think he stuck all of his tumbles, maybe minus the, the dismount. Um, Jesse also won the all round. I was secretly hoping that I would win all round twice in a row. But Jesse ended up taking it out with an 82.2 something, I believe. Um, I ended up being second with an 80.4. So even if I hit clean, Jesse would have still would have still had me in the all round. So uh, amazing athlete, really young. I'm not sure what he is, 18 or 19, somewhere around there. He got through a 16.4 on pommel horse, and he only scored 0.1 higher than Jordan. I think Jordan was in the 14 ones, and Jesse was 14 twos, or something like that. I was first up on rings. So I decided to take the Kip Cross out a few weeks ago to save my shoulders, save my biceps tendon, and uh, leave myself a little bit fresher. Uh, just doing that one cross does make a little bit of a difference, not just to rings, but all around as a whole, because if you're not conditioned, if uh, you're not doing strength, in a stable way, kind of three times a week or so. Um, you know, just doing it once and relying on the adrenaline is gonna damage the, the muscle. Um, and then you're not gonna have that same, that same muscle activation for the rest of the competition, especially in an old 30 year old body like my own. Will put up a pretty clean routine for us on rings. He's our good backup. Doing those extra handstand push-ups there for endurance. And I believe we had four or three for three sticks on rings. Three for three Australians were sticking as well now. After Pommel Horse, we were actually leading. New Zealand was in the lead. Um, which was very surprising to us but didn't really mean much because you're only tour Protestant so still had most of the day to go Sam of course is our top ring worker right now and I think Sam got in the 13.4s so a very, very good score for Sam. If we just get this double-double uh, E dismount, that's gonna increase the start value by 0.4. But of course, um, there's no guarantee that double-double is gonna be a stuck dismount. It's quite a difficult one to stick for most athletes. like I left left a little bit of the video in my bad who was next it's me 0.1 step out of bounds but happy I stood it up pretty well Sammy opting for the handspring one and a half. It's been going a bit funny. Sam has started to put one hand in front of the other, almost like a Kazamatsu technique. And Will making his way back to his 
double twist in two and a half slowly but surely. That was of course only a one and a half, but like I like I think I've already said many times since the Commonwealth Games trials, uh, where he had the the accident and landed flat on his back on the one and a half, it's just been a kind of a slow road back. Now Sam, on the other hand, uh, if you look at that bar scar again, you'll notice that one leg didn't actually go around the bar, but somehow the judges didn't uh, didn't pick up on it at the time, and uh, he still got full difficulty. Ethan's another one of those athletes that full sends the Makuts during comp day. If it's competition, it's no hold. No hold on the one rail. One and go. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. And, but you do see that now there's uh, more and more guys that are starting to do that like that. I am not yet one of those guys and I'm not sure I ever will be. Sometimes it's better to take the point one but to have the skill a bit more under control. I think uh, just a small pause is 0.1 deduction after that three quarter DR, but before the Healy. Uh, I think a, like a one second is a 0.3 and if it's more than like a two second, I think it's a non-recognition of the skill. So here I am. So the Australian team consisted of, uh, over there you see Clay and Heath. Um, then we had Mitchell, Jesse, and James. Really, really strong team. Uh, it's it's clear that they do have more depth than New Zealand, and they always have. But hey, one day we're going to catch up. We're going to catch up one day. And we'll put it together a bar and the high bar just for just for an all-round score and because there was only two of us doing around from New Zealand therefore uh, both all-rounders automatically make it through to world championships if you know anybody willing to sponsor me and all there hit us up so I think that was actually our first mistake and we didn't count it because we had three hits. The only four we counted coincidentally was mine on high bar. So otherwise, besides that, uh, I don't think either team counted a single four, which was very impressive. Um, and as a matter of fact, I don't think the Aussies fell, fell at all. I know Mitchell had a mistake on parallel bars, which is a strong apparatus for, for him. But uh, yeah, so huge day for both teams. Very solid day. Energy was, was amazing. So I will probably call it there. Um, just a couple more teams to go. And we're going to finish the video off with a picture of me and Lockie Ferrado. Lockie, thank you so much for commenting and supporting me in all my videos. Um, even though it's quite a small channel, small community, it's good to have guys that consistently give the love back. So thank you, Lucky. Um, we took a selfie together after the competition. Good luck with your training, mate. All the best, and I'm sure I'll see you again next year. So there you have it. Uh, 22 Oceania champion Championships under the wraps. We got Commonwealth Games in about six weeks' time. So... Yeah, one day at a time. See you, see you next time. Peace out.